Now talking about egg dynamics, the egg dynamics works somewhat like this. When a female fetus is conceived, she's conceived with around 20 million eggs. When a female child is born, she's born with around 2 million eggs. The first time around when she gets her periods or menses, she has around 20,000 eggs left inside her ovary. Now after this, every month that she gets her periods or her menses, this ovarian reserve or the number of eggs inside her ovary are constantly declining at a gradual pace. This pace is gradual up until she hits an average age of around 35. Once she hits the average age of around 35, this decline starts becoming drastic. And this is known as declining or decreasing ovarian reserve. Once all the eggs are over or the ovary has exhausted its reserve of eggs, it is known as a decreased ovarian reserve or poor ovarian reserve. That means there are no longer good number of eggs remaining inside her ovary. So this is how an egg dynamics works. Now imagine if you have around 10,000 rupees in your bank, you can make a withdrawal of 10 rupees every month. This is what happens even in the ovary. You have a reserve and you can withdraw certain amount of eggs from your ovary every month. Now all that is withdrawn is not spent. So if you withdraw 10 rupees, you can spend only 1 rupee. And you can spend only 1 rupee irrespective of the withdrawals that you make. The same way in the ovarian reserve, no matter what your ovarian withdrawal is for that particular month, only one egg will grow, will become a dominant follicle and only one follicle will release the egg from the follicle. So this is how the dynamics work. Now have, you have to understand that what is in your bank is not visible to anyone. So what reserve is in your ovary is not visible on the ultrasound. But what withdrawals you make is visible to everyone. So the same way, the withdrawals that you make are visible on the ultrasound when we do it on the second day of your menstrual cycle. Now, your ovarian reserve can be tested by a blood test, which is known as the AMH test, which gives us an idea about what your ovarian reserve or what is in your bank. And that is how we can guide you further regarding your ovarian reserve and what you can do further about it. Now that you've understood how monthly withdrawals work and how ovarian withdrawal works and how you can spend only one rupee or only one egg is developed and it releases an egg, you have to understand that your withdrawals or your anterior follicle count which is visible on the ultrasound depends upon what is there in your back. So if you have 10,000 rupees in your bank, you can withdraw 10 rupees every month. But if you have only 1,000 rupees in your bank, you can withdraw only 3 rupees every month. And you can spend, irrespective of the withdrawal, remember I told you that you can spend only 1 rupee. The same way you'll be spending only 1 rupee, but your withdrawals is what will be affected if your ovarian reserve is affected. So if the money in your bank is less, your withdrawal amount will also become less. So how does this concept of ovarian reserve translate into your fertility treatments? So when you are trying to conceive with the help of assisted reproductive techniques, your fertility physician or treating doctor can only work on the withdrawal level. We cannot target the ovarian reserve or the bank level. Whether we are doing an IUI or an IVF, when we give drugs to stimulate your ovaries, we are basically targeting your withdrawal level. So if your withdrawals are 10 rupees, for an IUI, I can help you spend or your expenditure can be taken up to around two to three rupees that means if you are withdrawing 10 follicles every month then i can help grow two to three follicles in that particular month and help them to release the two to three eggs that is for an iui now for an ivf if you are withdrawing 10 rupees then i help you spend all of that 10 rupees I will try to recruit as much as possible for an IVF cycle 
so that we maximize your chances of getting a good number of eggs and that will translate into a good number of embryos and a good take home baby rate so this is how assisted reproductive techniques work is that we increase the limit of your expenditure by working on the withdrawal level so this is all very uh, explained in very layman's terms and i hope you've understood it so thank you for watching my video